No, no, the uh, the two minutes was, was game footage. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be better heard than that. So that's that's the uh, right word of the game footage. The College World Series is like that. You can't tell. It's, it's actually generally it's just us. It's just the ESPN. Oh, interesting. All right, David. Ask if they got me. Can you ask if they have the press, please? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. I'm asking. That's all right. They'll get you. We're good? Good, we're good. All right. I'm leaving. Do you want to grab that cable? What are you doing? Yeah, I kept asking. I was like, you did the present line? Anybody? Anybody? Somebody like, yeah, we got it. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. You know if they're going winners or losers first? I'm sorry? You know if they're going winners or losers first? Winners first.
Yeah, the floor has it clear. That's a good way to for our team. We really played outstanding defense after the first few possessions of the game, gave some transition baskets. And and characteristically got behind by our defense. Then we turned it on. I thought our guys played a really solid 40 minutes uh, on that side of the ball. It was a good win for us. All right, Mr. Coach. Coach, you started the game uh, 4 of 18 shooting. What kind of adjustments were you able to make after that? Well, we have good basketball players, good offensive players on our team. And it's a matter of time before some of the shots go down. We, we were frustrated because we, we had some clean looks, open looks, just didn't go in. And then we had some bad turnovers the last three three or four minutes and a half. Uh, we let them get back in the game. Uh, but uh, our, our players just have to keep shooting. We, we try to tell them if you have an open shot, you have to take it because uh, you can call the great plays you want, uh, but great uh, offensive sets and actions and some of their talents are designed to get open looks and you have to take those open looks. And I thought we were hesitant early in the game. 
And we turned down some open shots to, to drive it. And then we were hesitant with our passing. And then once we became more aggressive and just flowed into a, a good offensive a rhythm, I thought we played very well. How did you adjust to their one three one zone? Well, we ran, kept it very basic. We put guys in certain positions and then we shared the ball. So the one three one is really turns into a two three, a little different, but they also have a one three one they play. So uh, their big man in the middle is a true one three one. And when they put the guard in the middle, it turns into more of a bumping two three after the first two passes. So I thought our guys really handled that well and, and made them go man to man the entire second half. You've been in the first half, you kind of took over the game a little bit to, to get the offensive flowing, and then Boogie in the second half, you took over. Is it are you guys starting to feel each other and, and on when who should take over at the time controlling the ball? Uh, well, definitely, we're still getting adjusted. I'm, I'm getting more adjusted to playing with somebody like Boogie that's so good at scoring and he can facilitate. And I think that really helped me, as you saw in the first half. I think almost all of my points were assisted by him. So that definitely <clears throat> helps me out. I think we are a better team. When we're able to both feed off each other, I assist him, he assists me, and I was really able to get my, my jumper going for them. Boogie, how were you able to kind of kind of break out of the, the little mini slump that you've had? Uh, just realizing that uh, I can't rely on my jump shot so much. I'm a three level scorer. So uh, just, just taking what the defense gave me, get inside the paint. I feel like the last two games I haven't been really been uh, living inside the paint, getting the paint, finding my uh, teammates for open shots. And now with my scoring, uh, realizing that I'm going to draw a lot of attention. So uh, just uh, getting my teammates to open shots and then um, getting in the paint. And uh, once I get in the paint, everything else uh, opens up for me. Coach, how would you assess uh, Ethan's uh, impact on the squad as a whole after only scoring two points against Irvine in their previous game? Well, he played great tonight. He played terrific defense. He had no turnover, a few assists. He made some big three-point shots for us. He's a really good shooter with his feet set in, in rhythm. And I just thought he played an outstanding game on both sides. How confident are you guys right now? You're, you're winning on the road, neutral courts. This is an ACC team. You're 12 and 0. How, where, how do you feel? Well, I'll start first, but we don't take any team for granted or any game for granted. So uh, each game is important to us. Uh, our players are extremely focused to come in here uh, to uh, play in Phoenix and NBA Arena against a very good ACC team. You uh, can we'll expand on that. Oh, yeah. Ever since I've been here, first thing we were taught was defense. So I try to implement that on the guys and be a leader by example on that. And like Coach always says, our defense travels no matter where we're playing that. We can go overseas, any state. Defense will always travel. Like as you saw, shots may not fall everywhere, every gym. But if you're defending, I think you have a really good chance to win. So as long as we keep taking pride in defense, we're really confident about what we can do. Ethan, how was the matchup with Kyle Sturdy, that guy you were competing with for a position to, to now be facing him on the other side? Oh, absolutely. He's always been a really good player. My freshman year, he made me so much better. And he didn't really get credit for that. So I like to give him credit right now. Every day in practice, he went at me. He kept me on my toes. And when I was struggling out there, he would come on the bench and he would uplift us and he would uplift me. So it was really nice to see him out there getting big minutes. He made some really good shots. He's always been a good player. I have nothing to respect for him. What was it like going up against Michael DeVoe, who came into the game averaging 22.1 points per game? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we really don't you know, focus on that. Obviously, we do if, if we stop him, then they really wouldn't be able to be in the game. But I mean, um, I feel like uh, our focus is to win the game and, and we'll win as much as we can. So, him, him scoring, his teammates didn't really get uh, flowing. So, they weren't able to. To, to score enough points, so I feel like uh, that we got enough to win. He's a very talented offensive player, and our team defense, we had, like Boogie indicated, we had to play team defense. It's uh, they only had fifty three points per game. He had twenty five on twenty two shots, and had uh, but but he's very tough to guard one on one. I thought our, our guys did a pretty good job of just making him shoot over us. He, he's really crafty with his ball fakes, and but he shot under fifty percent. And uh, uh, as Boogie indicated. Uh, if the ball is going to be in his hands most of the game, we, uh, he is going to score, but we have to try to eliminate uh, the other guys from doing what they do well. Andy, with Max not being with you guys, uh, what can you do to get Isaiah White going uh, to contribute a little bit more than, than what he has been uh, this season? Well, I, Isaiah White has been a terrific player for us. He was started for a lot of games last season. He was huge in the NCAA tournament. We know he's a good basketball player. 
and he just needs to keep getting back into playing shape uh, and keep working on his skills. And I'm sure he's going to help us. He helped us uh, tonight, played 13 minutes, and I thought he played really well uh, at times this evening or this afternoon. And uh, he did miss a couple easy shots, one easy shot and a free throw, but that, that, that'll fall. He's a really good basketball player, and we're going to need him uh, to be part of our uh, rotation uh, here coming up soon. Even you brought up Kyle and how he helped you grow. Andy, can you reflect back? What did you see from Jordan Usher's game today? Well, Jordan and Kyle have improved as players. They're very, uh, very tough to guard, and, and they, they played very hard. So I was impressed with both of them. And, and just, Ethan with, with Kyle, uh, it was great to see him. He's, he's really improved as a player. And, and uh, uh, so we were excited to see both of them. Uh, however, we did want to win the game. Make the scout report a little bit easier. Well, it was funny. Uh, we did run a play at the end that uh, Jordan knew, and you know, we still got what we wanted out of it. So we were kind of chuckling about that. But uh, uh, I, I give Jordan and Kyle a lot of credit because uh, they've improved. Uh, Georgia Tech had a very good year last year. They won the ACC tournament, went to the NCAA tournament. Coach Patrick does a terrific job. So those guys are a big part of what they're doing. And it's great to see their success uh, in their hometown of Atlanta. And then obviously the guys are wearing masks right now. What extra things are you guys doing? With kind of the resurgence of COVID right now, and some teams having to shut down and stop games. Well, I, I just received a text. I think the 28 Division One teams that are shut down or have just come off the pause. A lot of big games have been canceled. We're just trying to do our part. We have uh, Max and COVID protocol at home right now. And this uh, the, the new variant uh, it is really contagious, and we just have to do our best. Uh, you can get this anywhere at any time, and we. Uh, we understand from last year what it's like, uh, but now that the United States is wide open and, and there's fans in the stands and, and when you go in the store, it, 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 everybody is, it, it's a wide open society now with uh, rapidly spreading COVID across the country. So when it comes to sports, if you look at the NFL, the NHL, uh, college football, college basketball, you're in, in the NBA, you're seeing a lot of athletes uh, test positive and it's affecting games being canceled and certainly if you have to play without some of your key players, it affects the, the individual team. Are you telling the players anything in particular to, to be extra cautious? Yes, we are. Yes, we're very, uh, that's why we didn't shake hands with Georgia Tech today. We, uh, we waved to them, and no handshakes before or after the game. And we just have to be careful as a group because we're in a hotel with a lot of people and everywhere we go when we're home. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's not unprevented, but you just have to do what you can to prevent it. And it happens like Max uh, and COVID protocol. It, you just got you got to take it uh, day by day. Yeah, but but uh, we have a huge game on Tuesday in Oklahoma City against Oklahoma State. So we'll leave tomorrow and go we'll prepare for that. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Coach, if you might just start with an opening yeah. remarks and um, questions. Yep. Uh, first of all, I'll give uh, USC a lot of credit. Really good basketball team, very well coached. Um, they got a lot of good players. Uh, and the difference in the game was obviously that three-point shooting. Uh, they were six for 13 in the first half and three for six in the second half. Um, however, really proud of our young men. Um, you know, they, they gave a great fight. They didn't, even when there were some times where we got down, we had some, we fought our way back, had some opportunities, got down six in the second half, and they missed a shot and then got a key offensive rebound and, and, um, uh, and hit a three. And so... Uh, but we'll keep getting better, as I as I've told anybody, especially for the Atlanta media. They know I've said that we're you know we will get better as the year progresses. I think we'll play our best basketball once we get to ACC play, which is after Christmas. And um, um, you know this was a great four game stretch for us for you know top twenty five teams, two of them in the top ten, and it doesn't get any easier. We come right back around and play Tuesday against a really good well-coached Georgia State team, and we'll have to be ready to go. But um, I love our group. I love our guys, and we'll keep getting better. We're young in a lot of areas, and um, uh, we'll keep fighting and and, uh, um, and keep improving. Kelly, why don't you start off? Uh, Josh, just, you know, it was interesting in the first half. You went with Saba a lot, and then he didn't play in the second half. You seemed to be kind of getting after on the boards for you a little bit. Kind of what was the decision? Yeah, no, Saba did a good job. I didn't know if Rodney was going to play, but uh, he had a uh, he had hurt himself in practice, so I didn't know if he was going to play. And I thought he was, you know, wasn't as productive to start. Part of that was probably because of the, the injury he had from practice the day before. And um, so I put Saba in. I thought Saba did a lot of good. The only reason I didn't play in the second half was – you know, I just felt we had to kind of change some things up and we went small. And uh, I thought it was effective for us. We did some different things with the way we were guarding ball screens. And I just thought maybe small would give us a different look. Um, and, you know, we had some opportunities. And uh, But I thought Saba was really proud of Saba. Did a nice job. You just got to keep working, keep staying after. But I thought, keep staying after it. And I thought what he did today is a real promising sign. And we're going to need to continue to, to build him along is, and, and continue to get better. You saw him giving us some issues early in the game. Um, 
what was working well for you and then what were they able to do to, to adjust to it? Well, our zone is very complex and there's a couple of things where we got, um, where we got uh, some of our rules weren't exactly followed. And so when that happens, when there's a breakdown that allows a, an open shot, um, you know, because of the way our zone is, it's, it's a very unique and different zone. And, and, and it's always best, as I've said, since I've been at Georgia Tech, getting old and staying old gives you the best chance of being successful because a lot of them, you have guys in the program multiple years who understand the, the complexities of the zone and the rules and everything that goes with that. However, USC hit a couple, they, they struggled early with it. Then they got a couple shots from the corner, a couple offensive rebounds, kick out for threes. Um, but it sort of goes back to a make in this game. You, you know, it's, it's, the defense looks good when you're not making shots and when you make shots, you know, and, and a couple of the gates and tough shots. I mean, those corner threes are not easy shots always. And, and you got to give USC credit, Mobley Peterson, the Anderson kid, number 20, hit, hit a couple in the first half, three for three. There was one where we got hurt, where we overhelped, and um, so you got to give USC credit on that. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, there was a major foul discrepancy at the beginning of the second half, and that seemed to work. You were not getting calls on the offensive end when Mike was driving, and they were getting their calls on the other side of the court. And I could tell there was some frustration going on. Kind of, what did you think of? I guess that, and how do you combat that when you're not getting calls when you guys are driving the basket? Yeah, of course, you know, I, I feel as much as we we, we drive that, that, you know, I like for us to get more opportunities to get to the free throw line. Um, uh, but, you know, that's, you know, you have the three officials and, and uh, um, I know those guys have worked deep into the NCAA tournament. And um, um, so, you know, they're the ones who are out there making the decisions. And if they see it's a foul, they're going to call it. If not, they're not going to call it. So it's, it's really on on the officials on that other thing. And I know officials have really tough jobs. It's not an easy job. And, and um, uh, but I, I, I know, I know Kip, he's been a final four guy. I think um, um, Nixon has been in the deep tournament. I don't know, Bill, I think, uh, or the other guy was, I'm not sure where, how deep he was in the tournament. So those are three NC trade tournament officials. So. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, you have a pair of uh, non-conference games next week against Georgia State and Alabama now. What can you do in those two games to improve heading into ACC play in January? We just got to get a win. You know, we need a win. We need a win on Tuesday and try to win on Thursday. And neither game is easy. Both are good teams and good. They got you know good coaches and they are they're they're well coached and. We just got to try to find a way to get, keep getting better and, and try to get a win. Yeah. Mike, obviously, I can tell you're visibly frustrated at this point. Um, just can you kind of talk about kind of what's going on in terms of just not being able to get over the top in, in these last few games? Uh, it's frustrating um, to, to go on this losing streak that we um, have going on. But uh, it is what it is. It's basketball. It's highs and lows in it. Um, but uh, for us as a team, we got to stay down and, and stay together. Um, we got to keep getting better. Um, we got to go over this film and get and have a great film session tomorrow and prepare for Tuesday. Um, but we have a long season ahead of us. Um, this doesn't dictate our season at all. Um, last year we had a stretch too in the beginning of the season that happened um, the way we didn't want it. So we just got to keep getting better and we have a long stretch to go. So um, I would say that. Anybody have any more questions for Mike? Mike, USC, uh, they said that they were. Trying to make it tough on you, but they really wanted to take everyone else around you away. Um, how did you see their defense? You know, try to guard you maybe differently than, than other teams have. Um, I feel like it, it's all teams. They're trying to run me off the three point line. Um, they know I can really shoot the ball and stuff, and you know, colliding when I when I drive to the basket and uh, making it difficult for me. Um, but I, I just gotta have trust in my teammates. Um, it's a big thing. Um, just be able to find them, make a great read. You know, and be able to play make as well. Um, and also, I got to be able to get my shot off faster. That's another thing too. Um, I know that guy's going to fly at me. I know he's got a report. He's going to let him shoot the ball. So um, I got to be better on that. Josh, obviously uh, Jordan and Kyle being former USC players, how do you think they handled the emotion of that? And do you tell them anything specifically before a game when you're facing your former team? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, uh, you know, I think. Uh, I have tremendous respect for Coach Enfield and, and his staff and their program. He does a great job. They've been very, very successful. 
And, um, you know, he's, he's an excellent, excellent basketball coach. Um, and then, uh, secondly, I was really proud of Jordan Usher and Kyle. You know, I know that's not easy to play against a former school that you were at. And, and they have great respect for, obviously, for USC and, and for Coach Enfield. And sometimes just within the college basketball world, things don't always work out. And you, you want to get a fresh start elsewhere. And that's kind of what happened with Jordan and Kyle. But I was really proud of both young men. I thought they handled themselves well. And uh, they played hard. And, um, and they had, obviously, great respect for, for USC and Coach Enfield. No. It seems like you're still missing a secondary piece that's more consistent to go with Mike in terms of offense, whether it's well, like Debo or Miles or someone to knock down outside shots. We need we lost we lost the ACC player of the year. We lost the ACC defensive player of the year. And and he not only was or he was a really good offensive player, he wasn't like some defensive specialist. He was a big time offensive guy and at one point mid year, they're saying he's going to be player of the year. So, and then we lose Parham, you know, Bubba Parham, starter for us from last year's championship team. So we lost a lot. So we put a lot on Mike and like Jordan, and they, you know, it's a lot of a lot of responsibility on 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 Michael to to be at a high level for us every game because we don't, you know, we're we're young in a lot of other areas besides Michael and Jordan on the printer there. You know, obviously Khalid's. You know, he's flying around effort guy, but we put a lot on Mike and Jordan to score for us. So we, we need to get Bubba back. That will help give us another scorer slash shooter, just, just another guy that can put the ball in the basket. And uh, and we need other guys to continue to step up. I thought, you know, Debo and Miles Kelly got good looks today. They just unfortunately didn't fall. And those guys are good shooters. Like Davon got a couple good looks. And, you know, Kyle had some good threes. Just – you know, at some point there, we got to put the ball in the basket. That's kind of been a thing with us. You know, we were better on our turnovers, but uh, we've got to we got to score. And, and as you as you guys said, you know, defenses are really locking in on Mike, and that's where you just need to have someone else to kind of open. You know, make some threes to open some, some floor spacing as well too. And we had some really good looks today. I thought just unfortunate didn't fall. You still only had, I think. Single digit assists again. I think it was five today on twenty. Yeah, games. no, we, that, you know that's we haven't been good about that. And uh, but I, second half, that's not on that's not on the young men. That's on me because we did some different things. Just tr- we went small, tried to space the floor, dribble drive, and just play from there. But we also would have had more assists if we made more threes. So uh, that was that was part of it too. And so we're, we're due to get hot here. And, and whenever Bubba's able to get back, which I'm hoping, you know by Syracuse, but if not, whenever he's able to come back, that will give us another really good offensive opportunity. And, and Bubba's a plays his tail off and, and, and really plays hard, too, defensively, so it's not just an offensive guy. One more. And, and great job by the hoop hall, by, um, you know, Scott and Greg and Pat. Really a great event. We appreciate being part of the event. And, uh, and USC is a very good basketball team. Very, very good. Yeah, Rob, do you have a question in Zoom? Uh, Josh, you you guys did a good job of cutting down on the turnovers, but you couldn't take advantage of those extra possessions. What does Southern Cal do that makes it so hard to crack their defense? I think you know uh, USC is just you know they're, they're they got a lot of good players. I, I think Coach Enfield does an excellent, excellent job both sides of the ball. And we had a couple good looks. We just, fortunately, it's a make and miss game, Rod. You know, as simple as I, I don't, I don't want to sound like elementary or as simple as it is, but it really is. And you know, they they were nine for nineteen from three, and we were five for nineteen. That's really the difference in the game. All right. Rod, is that it? That's it. Thank you. All righty. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Okay. Thank thanks, you. everybody. Thanks, Josh. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas.